The latest draft document agreed by delegates on the final day of the COP26 summit has softened the language requiring governments to phase out the use of coal and other fossil fuels. However, several key clauses have been strengthened. The aim is to secure enough pledges to cut greenhouse gas emissions to keep average global temperature rises within 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Well, earlier our science editor David Shookman sat down with the US climate envoy John Kerry. He gave the BBC his assessment of the final deal being negotiated at COP26. I think we're coming together. I think they're always in this kind of a negotiation. A few issues floating around. There are usually a hundred rumours regarding that thing. And um, I feel very, very good that this uh, has the potential to be a very important statement. Big arguments over finance, I'm hearing. Well, there's some arguments over finance. I don't know how big they are, but um, we have to come up with a mechanism that provides more money. We want to support more money for adaptation, more money for the overall effort to mitigate, uh, because we can't win if we don't have the funding to be able to implement. So, uh, you know, there are always expectations. We're going to work through it. We're going to come up with an agreement. And the arguments are line by line. Do you think the <laughs> sentence about fossil fuels and coal will survive this last stage of well, the G20, bargaining. the G20 supported it. It's very much taken from the G20. The G20 had China, Russia, India, a bunch of countries at the table. They signed off on that language. So it would be sort of odd to suddenly be going backwards in what you already put out in the context of the 20 biggest economies in the world. So casting ahead, will emissions be going up or down by 2030? By 2030, they'll be going down. Definitely, because they're well, heading they'll up be at going, the moment. They'll be going down in 65% of the world, that the GDP of the world that has signed on to plans that, in fact, keep 1.5 degrees alive. That's UN, a huge step forward. The UN forward. projections, as things stand, are for a rise in global emissions of nearly 14% by 2030. That's before many of these plans were put forward here. The IEA has done a modeling run. Other models have been run. They show that if we continue the things that are that are that have been announced here and decided on here, if you do them, then by 2050 we can hold to 1.8 degrees. Are we moving fast enough? No, but that's what this meeting is about. You know, the scientists never said, "Hey, you guys have to have this done by the end of the COP." They said you have 10 years. Well, they said it was incredibly urgent. No, yeah, it is incredibly urgent. And that's exactly why 65% of global GDP has said we're going to keep 1.5 degrees alive. Now we need other nations to come on board. Is there a difference in your minds in the strange language of these COP conferences <laughs> between the word urge and request? Uh, yeah, because there's the a big difference. Because the documents have shifted overnight. Yeah. Is request stronger than urge? Uh, in the parlance, in the internal parlance of these crazy meetings that we have, uh, those things can make a difference to people. Which the important is thing is, uh, I'm not going to say it because I don't know. I want to see what context it's in. But uh, I think the language is coming together. I really feel very confident we are going to raise the amount of money for adaptation. We're going to be moving in the right direction. Less developed countries desperately need additional help. We agree with that. From day one at this COP, we've been saying the United States wants to raise the amount for adaptation. We support it, and we'll be moving in the right direction, I believe, as we leave here. I don't know if you're a betting man, but what time We're, will this finish? It's going to finish sometime in the wee hours, maybe even into tomorrow, and I'd say certainly by tomorrow evening, but it may finish sooner. John Kerry there speaking to David Shookman. Well, so much information now coming out of the COP26 gathering. One way of staying on top of it all is by following our specialist correspondents on Twitter. Do search for the hashtag COP26BBC and you can also find details of what COP26 is trying to do and what's been achieved and agreed to so far online at bbc.com slash news or of course you can download the BBC app.